good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee and Football presented by BKCW. I'm your host, Blake Monroe, where I'm joined this morning by Bobby Burton and Jerry Hamilton. Tell us where you're checking in from, what you're drinking. Obviously, get your questions in. We'll get to those here in just a little bit. But first, guys, let's start with some of the bad news that Texas got this week. Linebacker Samaj Burrell, uh, of course, leaving the program. Bobby, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'll bring up the statement that he released. Today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Samaj yesterday in, uh, announced his intentions to enter the transfer portal. Not a surprise, as Jerry Hamilton reported yesterday. Uh, we saw this coming. Uh, after the incident in particular uh, that involved Tavondre Sweat over the weekend, uh, he was the apparent driver uh, that rear-ended Sweat and flipped uh, Sweat's car on its side. Uh, while Sweat was drunk, uh, it apparently uh, Burrell uh, and his driving is what uh, may have caused the accident. We'll know more about that, though. In the interim, Steve Sarkeesian had uh, dismissed him from the team, from all uh, team activities. Uh, here is the quote, uh, actually, that uh, Samaje put out uh, yesterday. Uh, Blake, if you'll put that back up, I can read that. I would like to thank God for the opportunity of being at the University of Texas. I want to thank my family and brothers for supporting me. I am extremely grateful for Coach Sark and the Longhorn staff. I will be entering the transfer portal with four years of eligibility. Obviously, uh, Samaje, we wish you the best. This uh, writing was on the wall earlier in the week, as Jerry mentioned. Uh, at the same time, uh, Samaje has been on this show with us before uh, yeah. on, on Texas football. Good young guy. Makes some bad decisions. This is what life uh, takes from you at times. Uh, you can't be doing the, the stuff that he was doing uh, that night uh, and uh, think that it's it's going to have no repercussions. Uh, but we wish him certainly uh, the best of luck. And I look, Jerry, I think it's going to start happening where guys that for whatever reason, whether it's something like this, where it's very serious with the law uh, or whatever, there are going to be guys that start to transfer from Texas that have some ability. And yeah. they're not going to end up at, I don't know, Hawaii or Sam Houston State. They'll start ending up at bigger places. Yeah, so here's the here's the thing I would say for to that, uh, and I agree. Look. Texas is at the point where when you have three straight top five recruiting classes and you can recruit to the level that the Longhorns uh, are and have out of the portal, um, you're going to have players transfer out of the program that just can't get on the field at Texas but go on to be really good players at other places. There, I can almost guarantee there will be a player or two uh, that transfers out of Texas that will have a career in football one day. Uh, there's that level talent. Uh, that just it's tough to get on the field. And that's what happens when you recruit to this level it happens at Georgia it happens uh, at Alabama over the years. I mean, it happens at Ohio State. There are some really good football players that just can't push their way onto the field at Texas uh, or at a place like that that is recruited to that level. And then they go on and they transfer out somewhere and they go on and have really good careers. That's what's going to happen at Texas. I mean, so uh, it, it'll be some look backs two or three years from now saying, wow, that guy ended up really good. Why couldn't, couldn't he get on the field at Texas? Well, because the two guys in front of him were really good and got played football for a career as well. I think that's the, the area Texas is in right now and entering, and that's a great place to be. Amen. I mean, that, that's that's the whole idea. That's how you become consistently good, Jerry. Yep. And that, that's that's uh, the whole thing. Uh, you know, I, I think that Samaj has got the got the, the world ahead of him now. And we wish him nothing but the best. At the same time, uh, from a reset perspective for the University of Texas, that now makes 88 players on scholarship currently for the University of Texas. Longhorns are going to have to now net three negative uh, out of the portal. And we know they're still recruiting or going to be recruiting defensive tackles in the portal, Jerry. Uh, so it's going to be more than three, most likely from here, uh, that uh, are no longer with the program by, uh, I guess, the, the portal closes April 30th uh, of this coming, uh, uh, you know, two, what, two, three weeks from today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the portal officially opens next Tuesday, um, and then we'll close on April 30th, right before the, the coaches get out on the road for the spring evaluation period. Uh, so that's kind of the way all the dates are lining up here after all the spring games, uh, not after all the spring games conclude after all after the spring games begin uh, April 13th this weekend. There's some big spring games. Uh, they're going to have some Texas targets on campus like LSU Saturday. I mean, you're talking about Zion Williams, Cade Phillips, 
possibly Brandon Brown, Texas commit. We're all going to be at LSU. Uh, so those spring games begin right about the time they, the portal opens, uh, two, three days later. I mean, the portal's open before Texas spring game, A&M spring game, Oklahoma spring game. So that's kind of the way the calendar's lining up. April 16th through April 30th is a portal window again. That doesn't mean you have to have a decision by then. You just have to have everything submitted to the portal by midnight at 30. There you go. All right, guys. Hey, well, there's, there are reports, by the way, I want to say this. There are reports out that, that Texas and Steve Sarkeesian had a team meeting about the situation and others like it, uh, if there are any. Uh, it's not so much about no tolerance for underage drinking or weed. Uh, I can't tell you the exact policy that Steve Sarkeesian laid down. I do know that a meeting occurred. Yeah. Um, and it was fairly straightforward about screwing up your life and taking an advantage of, of what you've got in front of you right now. Uh, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I don't think, uh, I think that, you know, Sark has seen the negative effects himself of what drinking can do, right? Um, so if anybody can speak to these guys about the perils of it, it would be a guy that lost a multi million dollar job because of it. Right. Uh, to Vondre Sweat, and you, you end up on the side, you end up in your car on the side, on its side. You put your life in, in peril that day. And whether you want to want to agree with that or not, you put your life in peril. So uh, hopefully uh, Sark gets it, has gotten his point across. And look, I, I don't think you're ever going to stop underage drinking or drinking in general. And you're not going to stop weed anymore. That's just not reality, uh, but you darn sure can stop underage dry, uh, drinking and driving, and uh, you know any any kind of under the influence. That there's such a thing as Uber now, right? And all these kids have apps and phones. It's just uh, there's absolutely no reason for for that at this stage in life. Well, there was some big news in the football world that came out yesterday. Uh, O.J. Simpson, former USC running back, NFL star, and then obviously known for a whole lot of other stuff, too, uh, died of cancer yesterday at the age of 76. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, there's actually a guy that, that I know that played with, with O.J. Simpson. Ted Coy is a former Longhorn, played on the 69 National Championship team, uh, scored the winning touchdown against Arkansas in the, the game of 69, the shootout, I think. Uh, he was the blocking back for O.J. Simpson yeah. uh, in, in Buffalo when O.J. went for over 2,000 yards. Uh, you know, I met O.J. Simpson once when I was like 10 or 11 years old. I got to tell this story, Jerry. Um, I, You know, it's one of those young, impressionable type times. He literally had the biggest head I've ever seen of anybody <laughs> in my life. You always make fun of the how big the helmets are and stuff. He had the hugest head I'd ever seen on a human being. I it almost like nowadays you think about it and it's almost like a bobble head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and this huge hands, just a tremendous player. I mean, I remember watching him grow up and then, uh, you know, really maybe one of the first times I think that people got a reality check about what and who some of these stars on the football field can really be. Right. Um, you know, I got I got a text yesterday, by the way, that says I'll never forgive OJ for the white Bronco chase because it ruined my watching the, the Rockets. The Rockets in the final. <laughs> in the final. <laughs> I wasn't, you know, I, but my point being, uh, you know, I I don't I don't wish anybody bad luck, but I kind of wish him, you know, he he did some things I believe, I believe, uh, you know, and ended up getting even though he did, he got acquitted by a trial jury, he actually ended up getting uh, getting assessed uh, uh, in the uh, what do you call it the civil trial uh, yeah. as being responsible and owing a bunch of money to the family. I, my my point on all of this is I I I feel it's just a sad story. You know, it, it, it's you know having a great player like that, guy that so many people looked up to, and then he's a He's part of this whole tale that you want to tell and say, don't don't let this be too big. You know, so it's it's tough, but uh, certainly one of the greatest players running backs to ever live passed away yesterday. Uh, what he was off the field, totally different story. All right. Well, moving on back to some Texas related stuff. Let's talk about official visits. 
and a lot going on in recruiting as well. Jerry, I'm going to let you take it from there. Yeah, so um, Myron Charles, defensive lineman uh, from Port Charlotte in Florida, four-star D lineman. He was on campus last Friday, uh, a week ago today, for an unofficial visit, his first ever visit to Texas. Uh, I spoke with somebody, you see some tape of Myron Charles here out of Port Charlotte there, southwest corridor of Florida. Um, but uh, Myron Charles uh, looks like he's going to make an official visit to Texas June 14th through 16th. Look, all of these official visits, some of these things can change from time to time, right? Uh, but Myron Charles had a really good visit last Friday. Uh, Texas has remained in contact with him, recruiting him very heavily. It uh, looks like Myron Charles is going to uh, officially visit Texas June 14th through 16th. Now, I would say he's more of a long shot prospect, but you got to take your shot. Uh, Florida State's considered the favorite there. He also has, he'll also officially visit Florida May 31st through June 2nd. He'll also officially visit Miami. So those are the four programs right now that are for sure going to get official visits. But Texas has worked their way into that group. And look, you got to cast a wide net, a defensive line in the Southeast region and nationally, and I hope to get three of the four of the best ones you can. Uh, but Myron Charles on campus last Friday, and he will be back in June for an official visit, 6'4", 295, one of the top D linemen in the country, obviously a three technique at the next level. Yeah, look, you got to roll the dice on these guys. I mean, you you see how violent he is, Jerry. Yeah, and no doubt. I mean that that's just that's just part. Well, he's of got it. 13 SEC offers. I mean, I, so. And by the way, before we get to more recruiting information, because frankly, Texas had some really good players on campus yesterday, yes. and they've got another round of visits coming up on Saturday. These are not, however, official visits that are coming up. But before we get that, I want to say thank you to our sponsor. Uh, each and every Friday's coffee and football is brought to you by our friends at BKCW Insurance. It's a business insurance company. Uh, they talk about the insurance trap that a lot of businesses get put into. Uh, they try to take you out of the insurance trap by providing actual risk management consulting, not just price quoting. Operating out of their headquarters in Austin and owned by UT grad, BKCW uses a five-step process to identify your business's weak spots, design a plan, execute it, and monitor your situation throughout the year so that you can lower your insurance costs and effectively manage your company's risk. BKCW has already helped some of the most well-known construction companies, restaurant groups, breweries, and nonprofits in Central Texas escape the insurance trap. And it all starts with a free risk assessment. Go to bkcw.com or send an email to info at bkcw.com to get started with a free risk assessment or claims audit and escape the insurance trap. Thank you, BKCW. Thank you, BKCW. Yeah, Texas had some uh, a number of unofficial visitors on campus yesterday. They're gonna have probably they're gonna have fifteen plus guys on campus this weekend as well, which on TexasFootball.com will cover. We'll have a list on that coming out a little bit later this morning. Uh, but uh, Jonathan Cunningham, linebacker from North Crowley. Obviously, we just talked about Samaj Burrell, former Texas uh, linebacker from North Crowley. But Jonathan Cunningham, twenty twenty five linebacker from North Crowley. I think one of the uh, he was he kind of hit the fast rise button late in the season after the junior tape started to hit. Uh, he's up to double digit offers, but he was on campus yesterday. He he attended the January 20 junior day. Texas offered him in late January. Johnny Nansen took a liking to him when he was hired at Texas. Then Sarkin uh, Choice went by North Crowley and officially offered him in January. Uh, but Jonathan Cunningham, six two and a half, about 190, closing 195 pounds was on campus yesterday with one of the uh, North Crowley coaches, um, and he had a really good unofficial visit. I posted photos on social media, him with Sark, um, and, and had update on ontexasfootball.com with quotes from Cunningham's visit uh, last night. Uh, but he had a really strong visit. He met with Sarkeesian. He met with Nansen. Um, they are talking about official visit date. He's probably coming back for the spring game, April 20th. He has official visits right now, the TCU and Arizona State. Uh, there's a number of in Kansas. There's a number of other pros, uh, teams working to get him on campus right now. He's a guy that I think he'll end up with 25 offers after the spring evaluation period. One of those guys, he's long levered, very instinctive, quick reactor, uh, very natural at the linebacker position. And what uh, Nansen and Sark told him, Jonathan Cunningham, yesterday was they feel like he could play kind of like Ty Anthony Smith now. He can play he can play in the middle. He can play in the box. He can play off the edge. 
Um, they said he could even be a big nickel back at times for them. So that's kind of some of the similar things that Texas saw in a Ty Anthony Smith coming out of high school. I'm not saying they're the same level player, but they're similar prospects in that regard. Both of them. I, I was at North Crowley a few weeks ago, long arms, uh, Jonathan Cunningham. His brothers are probably going to be drafted um, in, in the NFL. Uh, comes from an athletic family, ran track um, for uh, – for North Crowley this year. Then Marcus Harris, wide receiver, four-star out of modern day. Uh, Sark's going to have the strong footprint in Southern California. Two prospects at modern day in the 2025 class. Jordan Davis and the four-star running back was back on campus last weekend. Marcus Harris, the four-star receiver, was on campus yesterday. Uh, Marcus will be in, uh, make an official visit to Texas June 21st through 23rd. He also has Alabama Tennessee official visits, likely Oregon as well. So that Southern California footprint, Chris Jackson with the modern day, Sark obviously SoCal, uh, Johnny Nansen, tons of ties in SoCal. Texas is going to continue with that Southern California footprint. Uh, Marcus Harris, one of several really talented receivers uh, that Texas is recruiting in the 2025 cycle. Then Jackson Blackwell, defensive lineman from Lorena, was on campus. And uh, the main thing there was uh, – uh, Kenny Baker has, has said he's going to come. He told Jackson Black, well, he's going to go take a look at him uh, in, in May. Going to go watch him work out. So uh, a guy that Texas will continue to monitor, Jackson Blackwell, 6'2 and a half, about 3'11", a 700-pound squatter, one of the top power lifters in the state as well. I think he could be a tremendous center, like tremendous as well. Uh, but uh, he's a guy that uh, Texas will continue to monitor. He's got official visits to Baylor and Arizona. He was just at uh, – a TCU last weekend as well. He's also got an official to Houston. So Texas continues his evaluation process. They're going to continue this in the May. Now they have 33, 34, 35, counting guys who haven't put out their official visit dates uh, scheduled in June for official visits. Let's call that number 35. They're going to add to that. That's going past 40. Um, so, and then one other note, um, I actually just re received the text um, that uh, uh, Kevin Wynn, the, uh, the defensive lineman out of Greensboro, Georgia, Green County, one of the top D linemen in the country. Um, he, he is going to make it in for the spring game, it looks like. Uh, so that would actually be big news. He's a Florida State lean out of Green County in Georgia there in between Atlanta and Athens in that area. Uh, but a really talented over-the-ball player, zero-tech, tilt player, Sean Rogers calls it. Um, but Kevin Wynn looks like he's going to uh, make an unofficial visit for the Texas spring game. Florida State, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia are your top four right now. Hey, i got to ask you, before we go on to the next week's uh, or this coming weekend's uh, official visitors, Jerry, uh, I want to ask you a little bit about the guys that went to the mic yesterday uh, and talk a little bit about those guys because I think we all watched and uh, talked about that. I spoke to C.J. Uh, uh, Vogel about it yesterday as well. A couple of things that, that I'm just taking away. What did y'all think of uh, Jaden Blue calling this a contract year for him? So, I mean, that means he's thinking about coming out already. I mean, he's only he only literally played half of last year, maybe. Like, and he really only got excessive carries or, or a, a major role in the last three games of the year, four games of the year when Jonathan Brooks went down. Yeah, I think the goal for all the, the guys is to be three and out players, right? Be in the NFL. Um, and obviously different positions have a little different timeline. There's Kelvin Banks is a rare three and out guy, right, on the offensive line, a true three and out player. Um, there's different positions, different timelines. But, uh, you know, look, the guys that are highly ranked, um, and, and Jaden Blue, is uh, he, he's had that um, – goal for a while he has that confidence he's had that confidence for a while uh, a lot of people just kind of missed that he didn't he didn't play a senior season of high school uh, so you didn't hear from him for his senior year that was a big thing nobody really interviewed him his senior year but the goals are already there um, I always go back to what TJ Ford says our the goal is to hear your name called on draft night and in football if your ultimate goal is to be a three and out player because that's when you're eligible for the NFL draft so uh, that's I think it's a great goal to have. Um, and I, I think that shows a I, I expect we see a very focused Jaden Blue this season. Very focused, as I think we're seeing the spring. Gunner Helm, if you didn't watch it, uh, Gunner Helm, Jake Major, Majors uh, acquitted themselves as seniors and upperclassmen, I, I would say, in their interviews uh, yesterday with the media, both uh, uh, representing the Longhorns. Well, Blue did as well. 
Uh, it was very interesting too, uh, to Shard Choice, Jerry on Twitter, uh, kind of did a little compilation of uh, not only Jaden Blue talking about sh the value of sharing the rock with other yes. runners, uh, but Cedric Baxter had said something similar. So uh, uh, Choice put a little mashup together uh, talking about both of them, both of them doing it uh, and being willing to do it. Uh, I thought that was a, a very interesting piece. Uh, speaking of running backs, Jonathan Brooks, uh, by the way, I think this is great news. I was watching a deal on the NFL Network yesterday. I think, Blake, you may have it pulled up. I want you all to listen to a little bit of this tape from the NFL Network yesterday. Brett, without an ACL injury last year, I think there's no doubt Jonathan Brooks yeah. is the first running back off the board, potentially in the first round. But he did suffer uh, that ACL injury after rushing for over 1,000 yards. And real follow-up questions from the team doctors, which is a good sign when it comes to these rechecks because it means that they believe what they were told and they had no uh, issues with what they they potential for some day one Ooh. production in the NFL from a team as long as you're willing to wait uh, until he's completely healthy there, Rhett, which, again, should be relatively soon. Hey. Yeah, good stuff there. Good news for uh, Jonathan. I also texted with his agent this morning, um, and we're hopeful to get Jonathan on the show uh, before the NFL draft. Uh, excited about that. Uh, but his agent said he's got more visits with teams this coming week. Uh, so uh, we wish the best to, to Jonathan Brooks uh, carrying on the Longhorn tradition at running back. Jerry, talk a little bit about those guys you were saying now. Let's move forward to, to recruiting for this weekend. Another big weekend uh, for the Longhorns. Well, I was also going to add what Gunnar Helm said yesterday um, about the freshman tight end, uh, Washington. I Just something – if you haven't seen it, go back and say it. Said he's going to be a beast. I thought that was uh, – Gunnar Helm came out and said that. Uh, so that was uh, interesting to hear and not unexpected to hear based on what we've uh, we've kind of been told behind the scenes there, uh, the freshman tied in from Langham Creek. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, sh it should be another good weekend for Texas recruiting. Um, there may not be 20, 20, 20 plus 25 four stars, five stars on campus this weekend. There's going to be Jackson Christian, four-star offensive lineman from Port Natchez Grove, scheduled to be in. One of the 10 offensive linemen that has an official visit scheduled to Texas. Number of 2026 offensive linemen that are, are really talented will be in, in, including Katoa out of Euless Trinity, Brock Colage out of IMG Academy. Uh, so there's going to be a number of those guys, Felix Oji out of Lake Ridge, over in Mansfield, a fast rising 6'7", 275 pound athletic offensive tackle. We're going to have a lot of guys on campus. Uh, so it's going to be more of a mix of 25s and 2026s. Somebody uh, asked yesterday about Malik Autry. I do not expect Malik Autry this weekend, but I'm definitely watching spring game. I'll say, I'll tell you that for somebody asked about Malik Autry. So Texas will have a number of talented guys on campus again. Mate, it's going to be more of that mix, like I said, between 25 and 26 guys, uh, but the talent uh, is is going to be a lot on campus once again. And one of those guys we need to mention, Will Griffin, quarterback out of Tampa Jesuit, four-star quarterback in 2026. This will be a second visit in 2024 to Texas. We'll see if Texas extends another offer uh, to 2026 quarterbacks. They have two currently out, uh, and that's Troy Hune uh, out of uh, Mission Hills in San Marcos, California, who's on campus last weekend. And then Dia Bell, son of former NBA uh, star Raja Bell out of American Heritage in Plantation, Florida. He was on campus in late March. Uh, so we'll see this if Texas extends another 2026 out-of-state quarterback offer this weekend. Thank you, Blake. Blake. You're, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, Sorry about that. We got a lot of super chats. Haven't done that in a while. <laughs> that we need to read real quick. This first, one, two, first two are from Jack. He said, thank you, Jack, by the way. The first one says, Bobby is going to have a bar tab. <laughs> and the We are. Next Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday at the Posse East. Join us from about 3 to 5, uh, 530 at the Posse East, if you would. <laughs> and the second one says, and Jerry needs some jerky. <laughs> We've got both of you covered there. And then uh, we have another. I think I'm getting a lot of jerky today, as it turns yeah, out. Yes, that's exactly what I was about to say. Major Alexander, thank you. He says, road trip fun for Jerry. Hook him. Hey, look, look, that helps a lot on I-10, you know, because I drive I drive to Florida and make stops on the way when you go see prospects, right? It doesn't make any sense to fly to Tampa, drive to Port Charlotte, 
drive to Orlando. Uh, then you got to come back. I mean, we're, you know, it just doesn't make sense. You get in your car, you go to I-10, maybe stop in Golden Triangle on the way, check somebody out, head to New Orleans. I mean, just on down the list, Mobile, see K.J. Lacey, get up in the Alabama or Georgia and on down the Florida. So uh, there's a lot of I-10 time. And that means there's a lot of beef jerky in the uh, passenger seat uh, on the road with me. So thank you very much, guys. Hey, KJ Lacey makes that trip almost perfect because he's about halfway. That's right. You know what I mean? So that you've got it, you got it easier this year than you've had it in years past when you went and did that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and if you get if you get in the Sarah around that Sarah Land area early, you know, there's a Chick-fil-A right there in a mall. So that makes it very, uh, very easy for a little uh lunch and do a little work and then head on over and watch us KJ Lacey throw the ball around at Sarah Land. But yeah, we're going to be out on the road uh, in May a lot, seeing these guys um, and couldn't be more excited. You know, we've talked about Derry Norris, the D lineman out of Spruce Creek and Port Orange. I'm going to go take a look at him. We'll go into Jacksonville, see Jamie French. We're going to get out, go sit Port Charlotte, see Myron Charles. We're going to, we're going to hit all the spots, see all the guys coming up in May. It's going to be fun. All right, guys, one other one here. This one from Jay Lee. Thank you, Jay. And he says, have either of you seen anyone play the original NCAA football game? Yes. Its release is a pretty big deal. Maybe I can teach y'all how to play when it comes out. I know one thing. My sons are very excited. Hey, you never know. Somebody might have a chance to get on here and play uh, play Rod and CJ on a live show at some point. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> And Rod, being, certain, Rod certainly plays it and has. Uh, Rod Rod is a little bit of a guy in that game, is my understanding. Now, Rod was in the game. His uh, yeah. <laughs> on his social media, we brought that up before. Blake might be able to find that. Uh, but Rod, Rod uh, there's a picture on his, uh, tw- uh, I think it is Instagram, uh, that Rod was actually in the game. So he comes from a special place. <laughs> yes, but Rod was is back in the was in school back in the day when that's what they did. I, after watching film, they would play NCAA football for four hours, you know, at night. So he's a he is a self-professed bad mojo in that game. In, in other words, he wants to, he wants to take on all comers. Yeah. yeah. But, hey, by, the way, by the way, Rod's catching a little. Everybody wants to play Rod now. I can't wait to tell him this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people confident that they they would beat Rod in the chat. So. Oh, I can't I can't Rod's a big believer in the option in, in NCAA football. Big believer in the option. So <laughs> get ready for it. All right, guys. Before we get to questions, first, it is time for our weekly baseball update with brought to you by Chinook Cedary. And um, yeah, I don't I don't even know really what to say this week. Texas obviously split the series with Texas State midweek and then lost their first comp series against BYU of all schools uh last weekend this weekend they head to houston houston not very good 16 and 16 overall uh those three games will be televised on espn plus but this is the first week that lbj will not be your friday night starter we saw him in action against texas state max grubbs gets the uh friday night start ace whitehead will get the saturday start and then sunday is still up in the air is what i was told as of last night so this is one of those that uh, you gotta win. Otherwise, I don't. I don't really know. You know what that would do for Pearson in his future. But I think this is definitely one of those games or one of those series that you gotta take the series number one, and a sweep would help you uh, even more with that as well. And also, one other thing that we need to note is over on ontextfootball.com, we broke the news earlier this week that Grant. And I'm going to butcher his last name. I think Fontenot uh, is no longer with the baseball team. He was a redshirt sophomore who originally transferred in from uh, McLennan Community College by way of LSU transferring there. But Grant is no longer with the team. So other than that, guys, I, I don't know. It's It's been a season. We'll just put it that way <laughs> for, for Texas baseball. And that's very unfortunate given the state of the Big 12 baseball conference uh this year you know it was right for the taking and everybody that was a favorite is doing horrible so a very very strange year for college baseball in general lsu you know top ranked school out of the top 25 uh i mean there's all kinds of examples florida not doing as good as everyone thought they were going to be arkansas number one right now looking really good clemson Number two, I mean, it's just a, I mean, it's not weird that Arkansas is at the top, but it's just a weird year 
for college baseball. Well, what what I would say to that is also, I mean, you can't pin it on NIL if LSU's not doing well. Yeah, yeah, because they're the lead. And, and Texas yeah. has a relatively strong NIL presence. May not be the top of the heap as it relates to baseball, but it's certainly one of them. Uh, Blake, tell folks about Chinook Cedary, if you will. I sure will. And uh, Chinook, got to love them. Baseball is in full swing, obviously. You need to be geared up for that baseball season. You've been watching Texas baseball go up and down and down and then up a little bit and then down a little bit further on the Longhorn Network. You got that MLB TV subscription renewed. You're ready to see the Rangers win more and maybe the Astros lose a little bit in between, guys. But don't forget the most important thing of all, as Bobby shakes his head, sunflower seeds. They're a <laughs> must when it comes to baseball, and Chinook Seedery has you covered. With eight unique flavors to choose from, you'll definitely find a flavor that you love, whether you're taking them on a camping trip, to the ball game, or on the wide open road. And Chinook has crept, crafted the best tasting sunflower seeds on the planet, and their unique flavors are made from real foods and real spices. So whether you're actually in the game or just watching it, grab a bag of Chinook and you can find them in your favorite store or you can order online at ChinookSeedery.com. And don't forget, seeds the day with Chinook. I, I, I want to add the day, guys. Seeds the day. I'm about to seeds the, uh, seeds the uh, day a little bit here. Uh, finishing up the first round of the Masters. People were talking about it yesterday. Scotty Scheffler won back a De uh, Bryson DeChambeau who shot 65 yesterday. Scheffler shot 66, bogey free. Watch a little bit of that. He was really, really, really good. Continues uh, his level of play in the world number one. Um, but uh, uh, Jordan Spieth just had a quad on 15, so he's plus seven on the 18th. So looks like he's going to shoot 79, uh, potentially 80 here in round one. Uh, but round two, round two will get is started a little bit. But Scotty Scheffler tees off mid afternoon, uh, I believe. Uh, there uh, maybe at closer to 4 p.m. Actually, so. Uh, that, that's kind of your round one uh, in the Masters, Scotty Scheffler. I, we all know is going to be right there uh, come Sunday, um, and we'll see who is going to be in that final group or two because I think he'll be in one of the two final groups. Awesome. All right, y'all. Well, it's time to get to some questions here, and uh, let's just start at the top, and we'll work our way down. E. Kim says, good morning from Rockford, Illinois. A second scrimmage on Saturday? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So I, I put a little note up on the board on ontexasfootball.com this morning about what I heard from yesterday's practice. We should uh, recount that a little bit. Uh, it was not a heavy practice. As we reported, it wasn't going to be yesterday morning. They were in shorts, actually. Yeah. Um, and so it was not a heavy practice any whatsoever. No banging around. A couple of notes uh, of interest, uh, according to one observer. They think that Texas is moving faster to the line of scrimmage and getting plays off more quickly. What does that mean? It could, I, you know, that this observer had no clue. He just said, felt like they were getting plays off quicker on purpose. Um, it could have been them challenging the wide receivers a little bit to get up to game speed because there's all new wide receivers. And, and uh, as you know, Sark loves a lot of pre-stat motion. It could be the fact that they've got two, Fairly, not only talented quarterbacks, but experienced quarterbacks that can get plays off quicker as well and get get the team where they need to get going. Uh, it could be helmet communication devices, as, some, as yeah. Casey mentions here. It could be a number of different things, but that's something uh, to, to watch for. Uh, then I was also you mentioned Jordan Washington, Jerry. Uh, I was I was told again that he's a guy. Darian Gallette apparently made a couple plays yesterday uh, for the young guys. Uh, I'm I'm really. I didn't write this, but the whole center situation right now is very interesting to me based on what I'm hearing. Um, Connor Robertson is the second team center, but Hayden Connor has been pushing over there at times uh, to be the backup, perhaps. I'm hearing Connor Robertson may hold them off for second team center regardless. If he, if you know, uh, but again, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, Daniel Cruz at that position, uh, according to, to my source, is extraordinarily talented. Yeah. He's got to get used to making line calls and all that stuff. So uh, that that was a, an interesting take that I heard from yesterday's practice. Also heard Manny Muhammad is back at it, as well as DJ Campbell. DJ Campbell, of course, uh, was nursing a shoulder injury on Saturday, uh, but I, I heard he's back at it full go. We'll see exactly what that means and if they kind of are timid with him a little bit 
uh, the rest of spring, including the spring coming up. And then uh, last but not least, I want to mention Manny Muhammad, uh, pretty much back to normal. Uh, but I'm being told that they are uh, monitoring him heavily every day uh, for a tight hamstring at times. That has not creeped back up much of late. It was early on. Uh, but as of right now, he's seeing pretty much regular action. They're just making sure of it uh, each and every practice. Uh, but is Saturday, Saturday is a scrimmage to y'all yeah. to that point in that question. Uh, and uh, it will be full contact and full go. Uh, they will hit hard on Saturday is what I'm told. Uh, by the way, and that's one of the things that Jonathan Cunningham, the uh, linebacker out of North Crowley, uh, said last night when I talked to him about his visit. He was really impressed with the energy tempo, speed of the practice, despite it not being a physical practice. So it kind of falls in line there with what Bobby was saying. The other thing is, you know, look, it, moving a little quicker, getting plays off a little quicker, it's a great testing ground this spring for Sark with the helmet communication, a more experienced quarterback, more experienced offensive line. I mean, there's a lot of experience except right tackle. I mean, the center position, right? Jake Majors, left tackle position. Um, a quarterback position uh, tied in with Gunnar. There's a lot of experience on this team running both back. Both running backs are back. So this is a great testing ground for that. How quickly do you feel comfortable with this team uh, getting to the line quicker, getting plays off a little quicker, slowing down those and, and kind of messing with the head of defensive coordinators? Uh, because these this he he headset communication with defensive subs is going to be interesting next year in college football. Uh, so you have it. There's going to be a little gamesmanship go on, uh, and, and you have to prepare. This is attention to detail. This is preparing and trying to maximize your team the best you can. I think that's some of the things we're seeing right now. And you work on that in the spring to see where you're at headed in August. Our next question comes from Jason Washington. He says, "Potential hurry up offense. Your thoughts, please." I don't know about hurry up offense, but man, when you have a third year starter at quarterback, you definitely can play with tempo. You know what I mean? And, and or you can milk it too easier. I mean, you we all have seen Texas try to milk the clock and then snap the ball with six seconds left, right? <laughs> whenever you have a young quarterback, that kind of stuff happens. Uh, but whenever you have when you have a, a, a quarterback that has three, I mean, you have a lot of different little nuances are in play. Um, and I, I, you know, Sark has never been a hurry up guy. Uh, now he'll line up on the line of scrimmage at times, but he's never been a true hurry up guy. I think he likes too much pre-snap motion to be a true hurry up guy. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, our next question here is going to, we're going to uh, go to the defensive side of the ball. Horn Seven says, What impact will Coach Nansen have on our defense in 2024? You think we could possibly see any changes in the scheme? Yes. That's what I'm being told a little bit. Yeah. I, I, particularly at defensive tackle at this point, based on who they have. Um, uh, they're going to, you know, we'll see exactly all of what it means. I don't know all of the intricacies of how he runs his defense versus what uh, they they did last year at Texas. I do know uh, that they've been – a couple of things they're working on a defensive front and at corner in particular. Uh, they're going to play a little bit different corner. Jerry, you, you were talking about that to me. Me and you were talking about that off air the other day. Explain to, to, to folks what you had heard. <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think you're going to see a, a little bit more press out of the corner. Uh, definitely playing closer. Um, uh, I, I just think that's kind of the strength of the corners at Texas, right? And if you have more speed at safety, and if you have more edge quickness, uh, a little more BGO at edge, um, then that's a great combination for being more aggressive at the corner position. So, I, and I think that's the thing. If you're going to get the if you're going to get the quarterback on the ground more, you're going to do that with aggressive play. Uh, there's no doubt about it. That that's one thing that's going to have to happen. Uh, you you have to have, you have to be able to uh, be more aggressive in your coverage at corner position. You have to have edge quickness uh, to really disrupt. But that's the key to putting it all together. If you feel like you can be more disruptive, even though the ball gets out of the hand quicker with quarterbacks now than ever, if you can be more disruptive and you can disrupt timing, you can disrupt footwork. Uh, you can be more aggressive at all positions uh, in the secondary, and I think that's what we're going to see this year with Texas. 
All right. So our next question here, if I can find it, I just had it, uh, is from Jose. And he says, please tell me the difference between last year's O'Shawn Mathis to this year's Trey Moore. I feel like Mathis was all the same hype, and then he wasn't good. Hopefully, Trey Moore is not all just hype. Two, it's two different guys. It's, it's actually two years ago for O'Shawn Mathis. That's how long. It, it may feel like just a year ago because it was so <laughs> harsh on you. But uh, um, the difference is really simple. Uh, Trey Moore is much more proven than O'Shawn Mathis was. Uh, Trey Moore had 14 and a half sacks a year ago. Now, Mathis played in a bigger conference, but he was never a dominant player. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's one of them. The other one is this. I mean, uh, Trey, look, I don't know that Trey Moore is going to be first team all SEC or even second team. Or, I mean, because a lot of that depends on who else is in that conference, right? And in that league, I'm here to tell you that he definitely would be a first team all conference guy in the Big 12. I have no doubt about that. And so my my vantage point right now, and I, I talked to someone again, is this, I mean, they they literally think that that guy is just a special type of worker and has a special type of mentality. OK, so we'll see if he's a special player at the next level. Right. Because he is going up a level. But I don't think there's any doubt he's going to be more productive than what Mathis was at, at, at Nebraska. I, I think there's a big difference between the two as well as is, is Osha Osha Mathis was at TCU, solid program, right, was a productive player. He made, um, I don't want to say just a pure NIL move, but let's say close to it, right? Um, Trey Moore's betting on himself. That was the major That was the major thing behind his move. He's betting on himself. He wants to go prove it at the Power 5 big-time level, and he's going to do that in the SEC. So I, I think there's a major difference there from a mindset of why those guys – made the decisions they made. Um, and, and it was somebody pointed that out, uh, that seeing Kenny Baker coaching the edge guys and ends guys, he is a uh, uh, he is a tremendous pass rush coach, even though he's an interior D-line coach by trade. Very good pass rush coach. So uh, we had mentioned that a few times that uh, we, we he was a, from people we had talked to, was a big-time pass rush coach. Now you're seeing him work with all positions across the defensive front, uh, and he looks good doing it. Uh, before we move on, fellas, Jerry, it's your time to shine so bright. You might as well get them sunglasses out and tell folks out there about Gooder. The pink flamingos are out, guys. Here we go. It's time for your Gooder, your daily Gooder read. Look, they have the somebody put, put points out on the chat. They got some Longhorn Gooders, man. I, I haven't seen those, but show them. Show them to me. I'd like to see them. Look, this is a what makes Gooder unique different and better more than just my words every day they're a hundred percent polarized and they're only 25 dollars. so that's number one right i mean how many people have lost 200 250 dollar uh, sunglasses whether it, in the ocean hotel run over them with your golf cart whatever right i mean leave them at a, leave them on the 45 yard line at dkr on a hot september day right when you're leaving the stadium for some reason 25 dollars 100 percent polarized because they're so affordable I never worry about losing them or breaking them. I even got some compliments on them last week in the Texas uh, uh, Junior Day, uh, Texas Recruiting Weekend, and I figure I'll get some more this weekend because we'll be back. They're always releasing new colors and collabs so you can lay low or get wild. Get wild, Bobby Burton. Get wild with your gooder. <laughs> All right, great for running, cycling, working out, golfing. I need to do more of that. Going to the beach. We all need to do more about the, the, that. Hiking or just chilling. They're lightweight, stylish, and don't slip off your face. If you want to support the show and try a pair, Gooder is giving on Texas football uh, on Texas football listeners free shipping. Go to gooder.com backslash on Texas all caps. Use that code on Texas all caps for free shipping. Gooder offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, which you absolutely will not need, and 100 percent satisfaction, which I will personally guarantee. Again, that's gooder.com backslash on Texas, all caps. Do I have to take these off or can I just keep them on? Yeah, you on. can keep them on if you want to. Blake's got to leave, so you may need to keep them on when, when it's just you and me. Blake's got to take his son to the doctor. Blake, you take care of yourself, buddy. 
I will. I'm going to put y'all in duo mode and let y'all recap uh, what's going on. We've had a lot of people join. I'm going to say my goodbyes. I'll see everybody Monday. Bobby and Jerry, y'all take it away. From Hook them, Blake. All right, All right guys. guys. I, well, I'll reset the show real quick, guys. Um, for because a lot of new listeners uh, coming in all the time, whether that be on uh, Twitter or here on the YouTube. And by the way, on football on TexasFootball.com, guys, go be an OG member. Uh, we we uh, have a, a subscription site there. Come be an OG member on TexasFootball.com. Thirty five ninety five for the year. Get that OT. Uh, F-O-G tag as well. Uh, Bobby, we hit on Samaj Burrell. He announced he is entering the portal. Uh, obviously, uh, we had reported that he had been uh, dismissed from the team yesterday. Uh, none of this surprising to us. We I, we actually, CJ and I, were actually told Saturday that uh, he was going to enter uh, the NCA portal. So um, there there is that. Um, on the recruiting front, uh, Marcus Harris, four-star from Modern Day, receiver on campus yesterday, as well as uh, on TexasFootball.com, four-star linebacker Jonathan Cunningham out of North Crowley was on campus, as well as Jackson Blackwell. A couple of younger kids were also on campus. You have some kids filtering through. Maybe they're vi visiting multiple schools in the area, right? There's a 2026 edge outside backer from uh, uh, Buford on campus yesterday, really talented kid. This weekend – uh, there will be 15, 20 plus guys on campus. It's more of a mix of 25s and 26s, but on Texas football, uh, we'll be there to cover it all for you. Uh, Bobby, and then I'll I'll uh, uh, let you get into the uh, spring practice uh, yesterday. Bat not on the field today. Scrimmage number two Saturday ahead of the spring game, April 20th. Yeah, I, I do not have the time yet, Jerry, on the, on the scrimmage tomorrow. It is not open to the public, by the way. Yeah. Or unless they change things in the next 24 hours. Uh, but I think it might be at 11 o'clock again, which is it, it follows what they did a week ago when they had recruits in. Uh, Sark likes that time frame, I think, because uh, it, it gives them a chance to get the uh, recruits in and going and into the meetings beforehand. And then the players have enough time to recuperate in the afternoon, uh, et cetera. And then he still has time with the uh, parents that are in uh, for recruiting purposes as well. Uh, it, briefly about what I heard from practice, uh, it was a shorts and shoulder or shorts and shoulder pads uh, practice. They did not hit heavily. DJ Campbell, we mentioned him on Saturday being banged up with his shoulder. He was back playing. He had actually come back on Tuesday a little bit as well, uh, but he did not uh, see, show any signs of uh, recurring issue with his shoulder. That's good news for really the only starter Texas has had uh, that, that that was out at the time. Manny Muhammad. Uh, is back as well, although he has got some uh, monitoring that's going on with his hamstring. It's been tight most of uh, spring, uh, but he's back taking more snaps again. Uh, and then just generally uh, news and notes, Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning both throwing the deep ball very, very well yesterday, uh, according to some. Uh, and then also in, in hitting Isaiah Bond as well as Jonte Cook on deep balls yesterday. Uh, and then uh, also I wanted to mention uh, Darian Gallette made a couple plays apparently. Uh, and what else do I have? Jordan Washington uh, was singled out a little bit as having another good day, uh, the young freshman out of the Houston area. Uh, so a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you mentioned Samaj Burrell uh, entering the transfer portal. Uh, Texas now at 88 uh, players on scholarship. Jerry, they will try to get to 85, but it's going to be losing a net three because, remember, they're going to want to add some as well. All right, uh, we're going to get to everybody's questions. I'll – Start taking them right now. If you have any, please get them in uh, and uh, get going. Uh, we're going to talk a little portal. Like, who are the possibilities? Yeah. Okay. Burn Orange Horn, no mention of Tap nor Swanson. Are they next into the portal? That's one. And then someone asked about uh, Savion Red and right? whether or not he's going to be in the portal soon. Uh, this is from Nate Ross. What are we thinking here, Jerry? I mean, what what's the idea – about some of the guys in the portal, do we want to wait to really kind of single these guys out, or are the names just too obvious not to not to mention some of them yeah. and acknowledge them? Well, I, I think this. I think position wise, I you know Edge is very deep position now, at Texas. You know, Samaje Burrell was headed to the portal any uh, before um, what happened, right? 
linebacker, inside backers, a deep position right now, especially with uh, Kendrick Blackshire coming into the portal, out of the portal for Bama. Uh, offensive line, deepest it's ever been at Texas, right? Can I, I jokingly say all the time, but I'm 100% behind it. Um, Kyle Flood's going to lose one of his children at some point. They're going to leave the nest. So uh, you're not going to keep them all uh, forever. So I'm looking at that position as well. Um, maybe outside, uh, looking at wide receiver a little bit um, as well. So I, I think those are the positions um, that where Texas has built a lot of depth and has also done that through the high school ranks uh, at, at wide receiver, at linebacker, at edge, and through the portal. So that's the game changers when you recruit through high school and the portal. When you bring some, an older player in to a position a younger player is trying to break through, that makes the breakthrough even more difficult. And that really tests the patience, right? And some guys are going to say, and they're going to go on and be really good players at other places that, you know what, sitting another year is not really what I want to do. Uh, but I've always said this, Bobby, that it's a great spot to be in for a blue blood program because you really see, and not that there's anything wrong with a guy who's third team and he transfers out because he wants to go play. But it, you also really find out who's, process driven in your program right i mean so that's the thing how much patience is somebody willing to have and how deep dive are they into the process and the vision that's now become a reality for your program and some guys will uh opt to go play immediately and some guys will stick around and take that extra year development i think you know if you're kyle flood you have a great you have something great to sell with christian jones and development and, and some of the players that have developed under him here at Texas. Uh, so, But offensive line still, there's so much depth on the offensive line. The odds are somebody's going to leave. Uh, one of Kyle's kids are going to leave at some point, and I think it'll be soon. Yeah, and I will add another one, nickel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they. It, it's not that the room is absolutely too crowded. It's that they're really close in years. So not only is Jay, J, did Jade Barron come back, but Jalen Gilbo now is really playing well. And Austin Jordan and Jalen Gilbo are the same year. And Jordan's behind Gilbo. How, how does that, you know, if he wants to get on, if Austin Jordan eventually wants to get on the field fairly soon, he, he may need to, you know, it's just, it's natural. And, and here's the point with Austin Jordan, because I actually think he's a really good player. Really good player. It, <clears throat> They, there's going to be guys that that, and I don't know whether he's going in the portal or not. I'm not. I'm just explaining the issue that Jerry tried to to just. Uh, I'm trying to punctuate the issue Jerry just explained. Guys are going to go in that are going to hurt a little. That's that's the the nature of the beast right now. Uh, offensive line, like Jerry said, going to be one potentially as well. Jerry, this one from Space City Wrangler, your favorite position on the team since you used to do it in high school. Any word on how Michael Kern is looking at punter? Uh, it's kind of a moot point until he does it in front of 100K uh, people. But is punter a potential, potential portal addition at this time? You, you know, p potential portal addition, yes. Uh, Michael Kern uh, is not an early enrollee. He is at St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, hopefully getting in his last beach days here before he heads to uh, landlocked Austin. Um, not that you can't go to South Padre, but I don't think Sark wants those guys rolling the Padre very often. So I hope he's enjoying his blue water in Fort Lauderdale there. I think Michael Kearns one, was one of the best punters in the country, a guy that Jeff Banks, Texas, is very, very high on. The question there is, since he wasn't an early enrollee, Ian Ratliff, a uh, walk-on, a very good punter. I think he's a power five level punter. I watched him in high school at Atascacita. He's gotten even stronger, bigger quads. You can just tell the work he's put in. And he's, he's punted well this spring. Um, he's a power five punter. Uh, but will Texas go to the portal for a guy that's punted three years as a starter? Uh, it's kind of a stopgap one more year. We'll find out. I think that guy will be available for Texas if they go that direction. But that that has really been open opened up more so because Kern was not an early high school graduate. If Kern and Ratliff were in competing right now, I think that Texas might have a little bit of a different outlook. So that may force them to the portal for a year. Interesting. All right, uh, here's another one, Jerry. And, and this is always going to be a question I think that we get uh, because it's a never-ending topic. Uh, five commitments so far for the class of 2025. Uh, for the Longhorns, the latest being Ricky Stewart, the running back out of Tyler Chapel Hill. Uh, who are the next potential commitments for the Longhorns, asks David Rawls. 
Yeah, I, I think it's a great question. So right now, a lot of these kids, I would say 95% of these kids are pretty much locked into their before the season timeline, right? Going through the June official visit process, making a decision in July or August, uh, before, right before the football season begins, their senior season begins. I do think some of those, a few guys will peel off of that that Texas is recruiting. Um, and and uh, we've talked, I put out a percentages from last weekend's visitors at, at on texasfootball.com on Monday. But I do think there's going to be some guys peel because look, it's a bit of musical chairs. Um, so, some guys are going to kind of want to get off the timeline a little bit or be forced off the timeline a little bit. Um, so I, I, I think offensive line, something could happen there before uh, late June. Uh, that would not surprise me at all. Um, I, I could see something uh, potentially happening at, at a linebacker spot or even a defensive back spot. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see uh, what happens. But the vast majority of these guys are locked in to that decision right before senior year going through the June official visit process. All right. Now, I will say this. Does Texas have si a couple of three silent commitments? Sure they do. What is that worth? It's only worth anything if they end up committing publicly. Because there were some a couple of guys that silently committed to Texas last year that did not end up publicly committing or in the class. So that's why I don't really – hype that up as much um I, I sometimes i'll give you all an indication when it's time got it hey uh, this one uh take a turn at basketball here uh from pd in richmond does texas have a legit a legit shot at the big guy they call it's not kareem but cream abdul jabbar uh this is the the indiana state player uh that they also call larry nerd yeah uh, by the way what, what are your thoughts yeah, I, I, he he may have the no contact box checked um, out of the portal, but uh, Texas has interest in him. Um, I, I will say that. Uh, the guard, uh, Julian Larry from that team, he's a Frisco uh, kid. He's going to be visiting soon. Texas is going to have a run of visitors here leading up to the, and through the spring game day. They're going to have seven, six, seven, eight visitors coming up in the next, uh, I guess that's eight days. The, the uh, dead period for basketball officially ended last night at 11.59. So guys will start making visits around the country that are in the portal uh, in Texas. I think we'll have six to eight visits coming up here um, in the next eight days. Uh, one of those to watch, really watch, is uh, Brandon Garrison, the big man out of Oklahoma State. He's coming in for the spring game, uh, six ten and a half, wall up, long arm, square, broad shoulder defender. Um, doesn't really have an offensive game, but he's a high level Anybody watch Oklahoma State this year? He was a true freshman. He's a high-level paint defender, rim protector. It would be going in the year two. Uh, Texas finished top three in his recruitment out of high school. Uh, there's some other guards. Uh, the guard at USF is the one that everybody wants, but problem is he's from Tuscaloosa, and he's visiting Alabama this weekend. So, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, there's a guard at Oregon State, last name Pope, who I'm very high on. The guard at Harvard, Malik Mack, a really good player. Texas is – in contact with a lot of these guys, and I think you'll see five, six, seven, eight, up to eight official visits coming up here in the next week or so. Interesting. All right, uh, we got more time for questions, but first I want to say one final thank you uh, to our sponsor of each and every Friday morning coffee and football. That's BKCW. They try to get you out of the insurance trap. The business uh, insurance company uh, takes you out of that by providing you with actual risk management consulting. Uh, they try to give you a five-step process to identify your business's weak spots, design a plan, execute it, and monitor your situation throughout the year so that you can lower your insurance costs and effectively manage your company's risk. BKCW has already helped some of the most well-known construction companies, restaurant groups, breweries, uh, and others in uh, and across Central Texas escape the insurance trap, and it all starts with a free risk assessment. Go to bkcw.com or send an email to info at bkcw.com to get started with a free risk assessment. And remember, escape the insurance trap if you're a business owner. Uh, you don't want to be uh, paying for things uh, that you don't need to be as well. All right, Jerry, moving on uh, for some uh, other questions uh, that folks had. Uh, I think that uh, I think there's a couple of things that are, are interesting here right now. Let's ask this one because we talked a little bit about Jonathan Brooks earlier in the show and how he's getting some medical, good medical clearance as of right now from some pro teams. They're not asking a lot of follow-ups because the, the surgery went really well and he's healing and 
taking care of it really well. This is from LL. Who do you all think was the better uh, running back? Jonathan Brooks or Roshan Johnson? I don't think there's any question that, that Jonathan Brooks is a better running back, but you weren't playing him ahead of Roshan Johnson because in many respects, he was the heartbeat of that team in 2022. Yeah, so I think I think it's a great question because instinctively born to play running back was Jonathan Brooks. Roshan Johnson's the ultimate talent maximizer, right? High school quarterback. He had the vision, uh, but he didn't grow up playing running back, right? He wasn't necessarily a born running back. Uh, Roshan Johnson's just uh, maybe the best top three leader I've ever seen in Texas football, right? I mean, again, one thing that'll never happen, in my opinion, again, is a backup running back be the leader of a team. I don't think you're going to see that again. Um, because I hadn't seen it to until Roshan Johnson did it. That's how strong of a presence he was. Uh, but Jonathan Brooks instinctively born more as a running back. Roshan Johnson maximized everything he has and has done it into a pro career at running back. Uh, so I think they're two totally different guys as running backs. Uh, but Jonathan Brooks, is he was born to play running back. That's the big difference, I would say, Bobby. All right, uh, Jerry, this was certainly for you. Brandon Brown, the defensive tackle out of, out of O'Galley, uh, Florida, Melbourne area down there, who is committed to the Longhorns, but also committed to taking other visits. Uh, he says he's visiting uh, Bo, uh, Coach Bo Davis at LSU this weekend. Uh, Longhorns have anything to worry about here? Or, yes, they certainly have everything. They have to worry about this until the ink is dry on the paper. Kind of yeah, right. yeah, we had mentioned that on here on, on Texas Football, uh, the YouTube and .com earlier this week uh, or, or very early in the week that Brandon Brown was expected to be at LSU this weekend, and, and, and that has been scheduled. Uh, look, I mean, Brandon Brown committed to Bo Davis at Texas. Um, but LSU, the thing with LSU right now is they're fighting to get an official visit date uh, because he's got Florida, May 31st through June 2nd, where multiple family members played football at Florida. Uh, so something to note there. Um, and then he's got Tennessee June 7th through 9th, Texas the 14th through 16th, and currently has USC June 21st through 23rd. So LSU gets him on campus this weekend, along with Zion Williams and Cade Phillips, by the way. Three top targets for Texas scheduled to be at LSU this weekend. But the key there is can LSU get an official visit out of this? Um, and we'll see on that. I think Texas had a great visit uh, March 22nd with Brandon and his mom and his best friend, a couple of and his sister was on that visit as well. Uh, but these guys are going to take other visits. That's the name of the game. Uh, but Texas, that first meeting with Kenny Baker went very well. The meeting with uh, uh, Brandon's mom with Sarkeesian and Kenny Baker went very well. But the whole key is you got to get through June. It, it, these guys are going to national recruit. He's an underrated guy as far as rankings go. I'll continue to beat that drum. Um, so he's being recruited like one of the very best D linemen in the country. Um, and LSU is going to give it all. They're all Tennessee is going to give it. They're all Florida is not going to go away. They're going to play the family card. Um, just how much momentum can they really create is the question for Florida. But I think Texas sits in a pretty good spot right now. But June's going to tell the story. Yeah, good stuff, Jerry. Um, hey, uh, Jerry, I, I have one more. I, well, I want to mention I want to say thank you again to Jack uh, for his uh, donation. Super chat. Uh, you need some gamer money. For your herd of horns, uh, that's the uh, comment about the the uh, uh, idea that the NCAA football game coming back out. I was I was pretty impressed by how many people play that game. By the way, reading through the chat as we were talking here uh, this morning on coffee and football, uh, good stuff. Hey Jerry, I, I had a, a question that I wanted to end with. Um, it, it's it's interesting because we're in that time where portal is getting ready to take shape. We've got spring game coming up. You've got more visits this weekend. There's the NFL draft. Yes. April 25th. I mean, this is a two-week span. Some pretty interesting things happening as far as offseason is concerned. Um, right. The next two weeks, what do you is is the coming out of the NFL draft? I think that the the I would say the what do you go? The the talk about Texas will likely be how many guys got drafted. Yep. I think that's going to be part of it. They're probably going to have another commitment or two, even if that's the 2026 quarterback, perhaps, right? Is this – and then you're going to have the guys all talking about the spring game, too. Yeah. What 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 kind of momentum do we think Texas can garner 
out of these next two weeks as it heads into what will ultimately be huge recruiting months of May and June, because it, it feels like it's slowly building, slowly building in a way that, frankly, Steve Sarkeesian wants it to. Yeah, I, I think it plays in the uh, the guy who plays a long game in recruiting. It plays in his hands perfectly. I think the next huge social – there's going to be two huge social media pushes from the, uh, Texas football. That's going to be spring game, obviously, and then that's going to be the NFL draft. And, and I venture to say the NFL draft may even outweigh the spring game as far as recruiting goes uh, because that is where, you know, look, after Texas has two receivers draft in the first two rounds, right? Chris Jackson, Steve Sarkeesian, they're going to be getting after in, 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 on the recruiting front. Ten, If 10 guys truly get drafted, I mean, that's huge for this program. Right before you go out on the road for the spring evaluation period, I mean, that's big news. A month before the official visits begin, that's huge for this staff. And then also what happens, Bobby, what we have to talk about, what happens the day after the NFL draft, the way too early 25 mock drafts. Well, Texas is going to have two or three first rounders on that as well. They're going to have uh, they're going to have Quinn Ewers. They're going to have Kelvin Banks. They could have somebody else on that list that you could see Isaiah Bond thrown into some of those mock drafts. So Texas will not only have that, but then they're going to be able to recruit to look. We're going to we're we're in a position where we're going to do this every year, guys. We're going to start producing this NFL talent on a year to year basis. What did Sark say? His goal is to have eight to ten drafted every year. Well, he's going to hit that this year, and there's a good chance he's going to hit it next year. So that is the two big social media pushes I see for Texas recruiting spring game. And I think they're going to have a really good group of spring game visitors considering this. It's the same day as uh, Friday, Saturday, or the regional track meets in Texas. So that's going to knock out some kids that you'd want to have come up for the spring game. Now, if it's a DeCorian Moore or a Kelshawn Johnson or somebody that's running on Saturday, even if they were to happen to come back and visit, that watching the spring game doesn't really matter in that scenario. It's more about getting them and a parent on campus again, right? Uh, that, that's what a Texas is trying to do with Kelshawn Johnson. That's what Texas, I think, is trying to do with Jonathan Cunningham, getting him back since the, uh, there wasn't a parent at the visit yesterday. So it's more than just watching the spring game. It's actually being back on campus with the staff again. Interesting. All right. I want to say uh, before we go, uh, last question here uh, lined up, Jerry, and this speaks to the portal opening and closing in the next 20 days. Uh, Robert Muhammad, do you think it will be five to seven entering the portal or seven to 10? I before even Samaj Burrell went in, I thought the number might be six to eight. Yeah, I'm they're right. At, they're at 89 scholarships right now. 88 cat with Burrell out. 88 with Burrell. So five more from that or seven more from that um, would be 83 to 81. And then they probably pick up a couple guys for sure from the portal. What What is your kind of sweet spot portal number right now in your opinion? I, th I, I was thinking eight total would be the number. Um, seven to eight total would be that number. So one's already there. Um, and again, if, it, if that number ends up being eight, that knocks you down to 81. If you bring in two D linemen, you're up to 83. Uh, if you bring in a punter, 84. You put up Bert Auburn on scholarship, 85, right? I mean, it's pretty easy to get to that number in your head right now. Uh, but I, I, I tend to think that's what we're going to see. I think seven or eight, and that's counting Burrell, so six or seven more. Got it. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for this uh, morning's show of Coffee and Football. Uh, as Jerry mentioned earlier, please join us uh, if you get a chance on ontexasfootball.com. Right now, we have a special. Uh, you can become an OTF OG. Uh, in started, we started our premium uh, service earlier this week where you can get articles from myself, Jerry, CJ Vogel, the whole gang. Uh, just $39.95 at On Texas Football. It's normally $60, but every member that wants to be On Texas Football member uh, can actually and listens to us either on YouTube, Twitter, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever. If you type in the code OTFOG and apply it, you'll get an automatic $20 off of your subscription. That's OTFOG for just $39.95 a year. Uh, we tried to make this a very nominal price for everybody that wanted to be part of it. Uh, for Jerry Hamilton, I'm Bobby Burton. Thanks also uh, to our sponsor, BKCW, Gooder, as well as Shouldn't Oak Cedary. 
Uh, have a good weekend, guys. We'll be back later this afternoon, hopefully with some more news and info. Rod Babers uh, joining the show as well. Uh, for every Longhorn out there, y'all have a good weekend. Hook them. <laughs>